All right. Hey, everybody, this is uh, AD Camp here, and we're continuing our journey learning experience on uh, employee engagement. And so today we want to share our review of the book Build It by uh, uh, Glenn Elliott. And uh, again, continuing our journey, our path on employee engagement, wanting to take in as much knowledge as we can around that topic as we uh, start to plan out enhancements to our employee experience. So really excited about sharing this presentation with you today. So to start, we're gonna talk about starting a revolution. The book kind of frames up what a revolution is and how we can be uh, in a, a rebel employer. And uh, so I think we all had some kind of takeaways from the book. For me, I really liked how the book uh, defined what employee engagement is, what it looks like, and then also like what impact does it have on the organization? So how the book defined uh, employee, what an engaged employee is, is that number one, they understand and uh, believe in the direction of the organization. They also understand how their role uh, affects and contributes to the shared success of the organization. And then the final kind of definition point for an engaged employee is that they genuinely want the uh, the organization to succeed. So that's kind of how they they defined employee engagement or what an engaged employee looks like. And then uh, on the flip side of that, what does the organization get from having uh, an, an engaged workforce? They 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 define that as um, or summarize that as having engaged employees. They make better and better better decisions in the business. They're more productive and they innovate more. So I really like that that aspect uh, of the book and how they kind of gave a better definition for what it, what employee engagement looks like and how, how it benefits the organization. So, Aaron, what do you think? Yeah, I was excited when I read this book, and one of the things I really liked about it was like seeing that we've already implemented a lot of the strategies the book suggests. Um, you know, a lot of the things that it does that companies should do to create engagement, we're already doing, and that's really exciting to me. And uh, it really shows we're continuing on the journey. We're not just starting it. Ready? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, one thing I really appreciated about the book was it gives so many different examples of, you know, what, what other companies do. And, um, you know, it's, it's just really, really cool to hear about all the, the, uh, you know, different different scenarios there are and different things that that different people do. How about you, Martin? Yeah, I feel like uh, we already do some of that engagement, you know, especially like, you know, engagement with the people like when we do wordy ball um, uh, or, or, or Christmas uh, parties, you know, I feel that's, yeah. that's a big part. I think what I like about the book the most is that <clears throat> how it gave so many examples of like real companies about how they, their uniqueness to how they implement recognition, values, purpose. So um, a lot of that is uh, within, is talked about in this book and it talk, literally the book is all about the, the engagement bridge, which has a lot of different elements. And I think um, on our next slide jeff will talk a little bit more about what what that means and what you know what all of that entails yeah so let's jump into that so the the book really gives us a great uh kind of graphic or visual of what the engagement bridge looks like so they the way the book describes the engagement bridge is it talks about there being some like fundamental or foundational things that make up employee engagement but they're not the only things they're, they're super important that's pay uh pay and benefits workspace and well-being and you see that on both sides of the bridge. Um, so they they really talk about those three things being foundational to employee engagement, but there's so much more that goes into that. And so you can kind of see the things that are layered on top and open and honest communication, which is something we're gonna talk about later. Purpose, mission, and values. Again, something we're gonna talk about later. How leadership management, job design, how those things contribute to the engagement of your workforce. Um, and then learning and recognition are also other items that we're going to talk about uh, uh, later, later in this presentation. But so I think it's a really good visual as we think about like the aspects, the areas, the levers that we can pull on to really enhance our customer experience. I think it gave us a really good graphic uh, visual for for how how that works. So uh, and and so kind of to get further into that uh, purpose, mission and values was obviously a big a big part of this. And so Betty's gonna share more about her um, her takeaways from that chapter. 
Yeah, definitely. So um, this was one of my favorite chapters just because it talked about um, the mission, the purpose, the value, and how each, like I mentioned before, how each company was so unique to itself. Um, <clears throat> And how every company should have this uh, three important things in uh, in our company and at Archfab, you know, um, we do have a purpose. Our purpose is to create a place where people can thrive. Uh, our mission is to grow the business, to have a nationwide presence, to have a hundred um, million dollar in sales and have over 600 employees. So people get excited. <clears throat> people get excited when they hear that because they know that, you know, um, there's growth, there's opportunity, and you're working to um, something greater than, oh, I'm just going to go to work and do the same job and then go home. There's, you know, there's a career path. There's a, a, a vision for what we want to do here at Archfab. Um, so I think that's really important. And the book talks about that here. And it also talks about our values um, and how important it is to define your values based on your um, organization with um here it talks about how they should be meaningful um the way that we, we we created our values here was based on the people that were successful at their roles of what the the things that they do, did great and how would that affect our um our mission and purpose and so people um here at our family, you know we talk about our values but we don't we just not just talk about them we recruit we terminate and we live our core values and we recognize people based on our core values as well. So one of our core values here at Archfab is to improve and learn today. Mm -hmm. And one of the chapters on um, this book is uh, learning. So Aaron's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah, that was one of my favorite chapters in this book. Uh, I'm a strong <laughs> believer that learning unlocks the door of new opportunities. Um, it's one thing that keeps me from getting bored in my role. I think everyone should continue to learn and I think we do a really good job at, at doing that. And uh, one of the key sections in this book, it talks about for learning to happen, companies need to have a learning culture that's inspiring and driving interest. Uh, when I read that, one of the things that I thought of was the ArchFab Trailhead modules we have. Um, as of this recording, we have 82 uh, modules that were created by ArchFab employees for ArchFab employees. And I think that really speaks highly of the learning culture that we've created here. Um, another part, another one, another favorite part of this chapter was uh, there's a quote in the book that talks about People at McDonald's get trained for positions, but people with far more complicated jobs don't. And it goes on to say, like, would you want to stand in front of an untrained person at McDonald's? I think we'd all say no to that. Um, so kind of tying back into Archfab, like, would you want to stand under a canopy that was uh, designed or fabricated or installed by an untrained employee? Uh, I think we all say no to that as well, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, part of the, uh, the outcome of success here, the... The greater productivity innovation, like develop the right skills, behaviors, and mindsets for a higher performance, um, definitely helps the company, helps everyone achieve their goals. Uh, there's higher retention. Employees stick around because the company cares about their development. And ultimately, you're creating a culture of learning. Uh, one of the ways we recognize employees, um, their learning accomplishments, is in the Trailhead leaderboard. Uh, Freddie, what do you think of recognition? Uh, recognition was actually one of my favorite parts of the book. Um, I think we do a, a pretty good job of rec recognition here at uh, ArchFab. Um, there's always room for improvement. Um, engagement is, you know, it's never going to be perfect. It's just something we always have to keep working on. Um, but whatever we put into it is, you know, is what we're going to get out of it. Um, some recognition that's, that's given uh, is at our company meetings and our CEO actually reads off uh, some recognition that um, is given from all different departments across the company. Um, and, so, you know, some, sometimes recognition is, is something we forget about in our day to day. Um, sometimes we just have to make it, we have to make it personal, um, whether that's like a handwritten letter or uh, an e-card, you know, sent uh, through an email. Uh, but, it's something that we have to we have to keep up with you know we have to say thank you and we have to do things like that otherwise people just you know feel like they're working a, a nine to five or seven to three thirty or whatever their hours might be but uh, recognition is is pretty important and uh it was it was one of my favorite parts of the book yeah the my next chapter was yeah go ahead Martin. managers yeah. 
uh, have real power. And uh, what stood out um, to me was that uh, there was a paragraph in there saying, managing your people with intensity often requires rewriting the rules of how you treat your people, retraining them or removing managers who do, don't want to live by those rules. And it, it, it uh, has four common reasons why managers resist. One of them was manage, management doesn't understand what leadership is saying, so they don't follow through. Another one is they don't believe what they what leadership is saying will work, so they they don't follow through and feel threatened by leadership's is saying, so they undermine everything. And last, management isn't resourced to deliver on leadership promises. I feel this is so true and also agree on the chart showing that the manager's recognition matters the most. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge takeaway from the book is like understanding what motivates people and recognition being such a big part of that and then who that recognition coming from, how that matters. And so I think these charts are really relevant to the book. And the final part that we're going to talk about here is about open and honest communication. So when we kind of we see ourselves doing this, you know, when we the book, when it talked about open and honest communication, it was really to create better alignment. So what does that mean for us or what does that look like for us? And we we talk about EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system, which is the methodology we use to run our business. We we talk about this, like the spirit really of, the, of that program, the kind of the overarching purpose of that program is to create clarity and alignment. And so we do that through open and honest communication. And we think by doing that, by sharing, casting that long-term vision and, and kind of backing that up into phases, you know, a three-year picture, a three-year picture and a one-year plan, like we can create better alignment. We can create transparency across the organization, which is super important to uh, an, an important aspect to open and honest communication. Uh, and, you know, ultimately what that does is improve trust. So, you know, sometimes there's like a, you know, there's a, there's a line, I guess, when we talked about this as a group, as we were reviewing this book was like, you know, how transparent can you actually be? And cause sometimes there's, there's a fine line between sharing something and then not getting it done. And how does that look to the rest of the organization? Like we kind of had that, that, that conversation internal to AD camp. And I guess, what what we realized or what we kind of uncovered is like it's okay to it's okay to fail like the company in, with individuals within the company are going to make decisions they're going to try to go in a direction that's not always going to work and so uh that's okay and really what open and honest communication does is lower the risk for decision making and so when we talk about creating an environment for people to thrive like that has to include the the uh the space to make mistakes to make errors to fail because uh, I know from my personal experience, and I think everybody related to this was, you know, in the like my, the, my greatest learning experiences as a uh, as a human being, not just as a professional, but even in my personal life, like my my greatest learning opportunities have been from uh, from uh, uh, situations where I failed, where I didn't have success, you know. And so if we don't give people if we don't lower the risk around that and give people the space to fail, then uh you know that that kind of works in uh in opposition to uh employee engagement so this graphic here on this slide the iceberg of ignorance my favorite my favorite graphic um you know what what i think this is summarizing is something that may be true for a lot of businesses right like the the fact that most of the issues day to day a, a lot of the issues are known uh to like members that are below that executive level and the, the higher you go up the kind of the chain of command so to speak the less issues are are transparent to people so i could see how this applies to other businesses um i i didn't re this didn't resonate with me in the context of our business because i i think that you know what eos has given us is really a, a methodology that supports people to solving like solving issues at their level so i i think a better graphic for us would be to think about how uh, there's like kind of silos or bins of issues that exist that are compartmentalized or maybe even departmentalized uh, within our business. But there's a team of people there that are suited, that are equipped, that are autonomous to solve those issues. And so, um, yeah, I didn't 
I didn't resonate like it didn't resonate with me this this uh, this chart the iceberg of ignorance but um, I get how this applies to other businesses I think we're doing a pretty good job certainly we can get better at how we solve issues across our business how we have awareness of issues across our business but uh, the book talked about like the how this this kind of structure this iceberg of ignorance existing within an organization how it breaks down employee engagement so uh, yeah so that pretty much you know, wraps up our presentation today. Uh, again, we're we're really focused on employee engagement this year. We want to we want to take in as much information over the next like three four months uh, around that topic. So we've got a couple of more book studies that we're going to perform. Um, but employee engagement, we learned this last year, is it it's a critical part to delivering a first class customer experience. And so we we want to do it because we want our customers to be. Uh, are to be wowed by working with us but we want to do it also because our purpose is to create a place for people to thrive so uh one of the cool takeaways from the book uh around employee engagement is that uh, oftentimes people uh consider happiness and engagement to be the same thing and so the book did a great job of distinguishing between that and really helping us understand like our pursuit and how we design our employee experience shouldn't be to make people happy it should be focused on getting people to be engaged. And we'll do that through focusing on the foundational things like pay um, pay and benefits and well-being and workplace, but all like the foundational things, but also the things that are layered on top of that, that we showed in that em engagement bridge, right? The open and honest communication, the leadership, the management, the, the purpose, mission and values, by leveraging all of those tools, I think we can create a really and deliver a really great customer ex or employee experience and therefore a great customer experience. So again, appreciate you guys tuning in. A big part of what we do with the, these book studies, if you think about this book, build it about employee engagement, it was, it's like almost uh, it's about a six hour audio book. And I think each one of us had to read this thing like three times, uh, especially listening to it. You. Um, you don't really get a great feel from the audio book about how the book is formatted. Uh, and so my encouragement would be for, for you to open up the book and, and read along with the audio book if that's if that's your preference. Um, but you know, each one of us probably spent 18 to 20 hours individually researching, reviewing this book, listening to it multiple times, reading it multiple times, highlighting it. So you take the collective time that we've spent together you know, the almost 100 hours we've spent together as a team reviewing this book. And now we've kind of summarized it, put it into uh, a great module for you guys to interact with in less than 20 minutes. So that's really the service that we're trying to provide to the to the rest of the company as you guys interact with these modules is really to summarize these things to pique your interest so that maybe you go pick this book up yourself. Um, so just wanted to share that with you, kind of the purpose of these presentations, um, but really appreciate uh, everybody on this team, their participation in the book study. Thank you to Freddie for leading it and uh, great job on that. And we look forward to our next one, uh, which will be presented by, uh, led by Aaron. We'll be led by Aaron through that book study. So uh, appreciate you tuning in, take the module. Uh, appreciate you taking the module. If you really enjoyed it, give us a five-star rating. Thank you. Thanks y'all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.